I don't know any golfer that would say no to some free speed. Well, today I'm gonna to be testing a brand new grip that I have personally never ever tried before. Going from interlocking to a double overlap. Yes, a double overlap. A little bit of a myth bus test to see if it's worth you trying. So the double overlap on Podrick Harrington's grip, specifically with his driver, is something that he's done for three years and no commentator, no golf pro has ever picked up on it. So the double overlap being that. He said on all his iron shots and normal shots, it is like this, but when he goes to his driver, he brings those hands closer together and makes that double overlap grip. Because he uses that logic that the closer your hands are together, the easier it is to generate speed. Like, think about this logically for a second. If we had our hands really split grip just like that, and I made a golf swing, one, I would have no control, but two, it would sort of feel disjointed, there'd be a snap, my arms can't really swing the club head. Now, if we went the opposite way around and went literally my hands all together like that, the club head feels really free and I can generate a lot of speed very easily. Now, obviously, I would lose tremendous amounts of control. So let's see if this Podrick Harrington double overlap that nobody has noticed in three years gives me more speed. And what I want you to look at this as, me doing a little bit of myth busting for you right here to literally see if it's worth you doing out on the golf course. Because I don't know anybody that doesn't want a little bit more club head speed and a little more yards off their driver. Okay, so we need a little bit of a benchmark. So let's just hit five away, get the average club head speed with what I do with my grip and my driver. And for reference, I interlock. So my grip is just one like that. I don't have them baseball, I have it interlocked. So I guess they're relatively close together, but what we're testing is that. Closer, more speed, easier, apparently. I'm a little bit nervous. I don't actually know how this is going to go. I saw this and I thought, you know what, there's gotta be something in here. So five drives away, my normal grip style, let's get the average club head speed. I think I want to take that drive all day long. I'm loving this new driver, by the way. First drive away, 112.1 club head speed. Now, I'm gonna try and just swing this as I would normally out on the golf course, so nothing stupid. And I'll do the same with the next grip. That was hit like an absolute honey of a hit. 112, the same exact speed again. Because I guess what it comes down to is it, can we get our overall total longer? So at 112, I just hit that 289 yards. And just think, why is this useful? Well, it's useful if we can hit it a little bit further on long par fours, we've then obviously got a shorter second shot in, more likely to hit the green. Or for instance, like this hole, playing off the yellows, I could probably reach this in two, hitting it longer. Uh, 112 again. That was meant to be a really cool club twirl. And that last one, 114. So the results are in, and with my grip, with that single interlock, I was 113.24 average club head speed for the five shots. And you could see on those shot traces that the dispersion was really pretty good. I think I just missed the fairway by one in the semi-rough down the left-hand side. But all of them I would take. Okay, the test is on, myth-busting time, double overlap, double overlap. I can't believe I just said that. This really feels a little bit bizarre that I'm about to do a double overlap with driver. Look at that, double overlap right there, first drive away. It really does feel like I can slingshot that club at the bottom a little bit more. I'm gonna put the same speed in. I'm not gonna try and do anything more. Let's just see if we can get some free speed here. Down the right half, but a decent drive. A little bit less to start with, 109.9. Not the start I was expecting. 
I'll be honest, I think I was a little bit apprehensive on that one. Oh, that was bulleted. That had to be quicker. 113.9. Okay, so 113.9 on shot number two. That first one could be a little bit damaging. Now, I have to say, that feeling is very, very bizarre. It feels like I would describe this. The club head at the bottom is sort of being slingshotted through a little more and that the club head is really overtaking me a little easier. Now, think why that would generate more speed. Again, go back to this analogy. It's hard to get a slingshot of the club with your hands ridiculously far apart. Now, I know you're never going to take that grip. So bringing them together, that whoosh, whoosh at the bottom really feels great. The more I get those practice swings in, the more I feel like I can do this. Okay, ball number three. Just down the right half, coming back in. Going a lot higher, I have to say that. 112.1. So we're three shots in there. We've had one a little bit quicker, one quite slow that first shot. And I think that was a little bit of apprehension. But right now, I would say it's really evenly balanced. We need a few faster ones, again, to make this average higher for me to gain and for me to say to you, you know what, this is worth doing. I don't know. 114. The one thing I'm going to say is, I didn't even feel like I had to hit that. I felt like whoosh, smooth, really smooth. Let's now go into this final ball and see what this one does. I'm trying to relax that grip pressure. I think on the first view, because it feels like I'm going to let go of the club a little bit, I was strangling it, really limiting that speed. And I literally feel like I've got no pressure on this. Just like slings through. 115.9. Since I've relaxed that grip pressure, just did it a little more, that speed just climbed. I really want to do this because I think there's something in it. Now, I honestly think this is the fairest thing to do. Think of those last two drives that I hit, 114, 115.9 miles an hour. And I've never used this grip before. That speed was climbing and climbing when I sort of just started to relax that grip pressure. So I'm gonna take out the first two drives and add in these two, because I've never done it before. I need to sort of go, right, okay, well, I've done that grip for the last 25 years of playing golf. I've hit five shots with this one. Let's see what we can get on these last two. So relax that pressure, relax that grip. That really felt fast, that. 114. <laughs> Let's hit another one. Oh my God. That's the best drive I've ever hit in a long time. I just literally let that go. Literally let that go. So look at that last club head speed right there. 114, it's climbing. Now I know I've not touched a 116, but my average is surely higher here. But more importantly, look how far this has just gone. 299 yards. It's a little bit faster and 299 yards. So that now puts my average with this grip just under 114 and a half miles an hour. So a gain of just over one mile an hour, but a big gain from 289 yards to 299 yards 10 yards in total. So what I would give you as my overall opinion of this grip is that it is longer, it does take some trust, but I honestly think if I can keep using this grip, I could gain up like four or five miles an hour club at speed with the trust. If I'm being perfectly honest, that last shot that I just hit was the one that I trusted the most, was the one that felt the best. And put it in perspective, I'm pretty new to this grip, so I think there's something in it. 100% you should be giving this a go. Thanks so much for watching.